a working class state of mind. I laid the boxy painkillers alongside the bottle of Smirnoff vodka on the coffee table. It doesn't even matter to me that my flat is that cold it would give an Eskimo the shivers. All I can focus on is the troubling thoughts which are circling around my head like a vulture stalking a dying animal, just waiting for the right moment to pick through the bones. Each thought bringing another feeling of hopelessness and his good pal, despair. I mean, Guantanamo Bay's probably got a mere hamely feel to it than this dump. Thirty years on this planet, and what do I have to show for it? Ah, uh, TV they daft his face ASI could trace back to John Logie Baird. A carpet that's got more stains on it than an actress auditioning for Harvey Weinstein. And look, even my was are fucked. They're that yelly, I'm starting to think they've went jaundice. Probably, because day after day, night after night, I sit here and try to smoke my cell into an early grave. I heard earlier, on the morning news, that the PM, Boris Johnson, has called a press conference for later in the evening. You just can that means somebody's going to suffer. As I go to light the joint I had pre-ruled in anticipation of my final act on this planet, I suddenly caught sight of a spider, dangling for a long silvery thread in the corner of the room. This tiny creature was trying to swing onto the shelf with all its being, but still it couldn't muster the strength to make it. I'm sitting here thinking to myself, just gee up my wee pal, you'll never make it. Take it for somebody who has the t-shirt and the mental health issues to prove it. Ugh, will you look at the state of this cunt. Jesus, I look like a junkie after a weekend in Amsterdam. The white vest I'm wearing goes so well with my pale skin and skinny physique. For fuck's sake, it's die hard with AIDS. Honestly, I've got to laugh. I mean, how has it come to this, eh? There's been no Queensbury rules involved in my fight to survive, that's for fucking sure. Aye, the man upstairs has shot for the hips and done a right number on me. Yin minute, it's your sweet sixteen, the juices rushing to your boys, adrenaline pumping through your veins and the world seems like a tidy hang just waiting for you to fuck her. God, I was fucking fearless back in the day. I had such dreams. Then, something happens. Sutton Nostradamus couldn't have seen coming. Your life flashes by you at internet speed. The next thing you can, you're staring down the double barrel of 30 years of pain and disappointment. Oh, you're still a pup. I can tell. You've still got the fire in your belly, that hunger to do something with your life. Okay, at time. For it will soon come to you as well. The flies will become that bit quicker. The shelves that bit further away. And if you're lucky, some cunt like me will come along to stand on you. And it's all your very quick. At least that way, you're spared the heartache of finding out life's just yin big fucking joke on gadgets like us. Ugh. Don't worry. No harm will come to you by my hand. You've got character. I like that. There's a lot to be said about character. You see, what have I been telling you? There's no point in trying to succeed. You're destined to be just like me, a coke can that's waiting to be kicked about throughout your entire life. Can you hear that? That faint voice at the back of your mind, the in taunting you and laughing at your every failure. The in whispering into your ear that you're naked to naked. Get used to it, because it's only going to get louder and before you ken it you've found your new best pal. I live in the sixth richest nation in the world. And yet, I can hear Susan Boyle singing for the rooftops. And, to tell you the truth, I'm even half expecting that Irish boy for the telly to turn up at the door with bloody Pudsey the Bear in tow. What's his name again? It looks like Gandalf of the Rings, only after he's contracted an STD. What's his bloody name again? Oh, aye. Bob Geldof. That's him. Aye. That's the boy. I mean, I think he was actually on the telly last week campaigning to save a distressed-looking tree or something. You see, around here, it's not the courts of law or the politicians who keep the peace. It's the drugs. Picture this scene. Each morning... I awake from my coma, then I sit on my patio chairs because I can't afford a decent couch. I sit there with my bowl of cocoa pops whilst I watch shows that can only be described as propaganda against the working class. I mean, just the other day, there was this boy on Jeremy Kyle who was convinced his cat was the Antichrist. It was something to do with the cat sitting on his phone and dialing 666. 
I guess it's true what they say about every litter. What's the alternative? Change the channel and listen to a graduate at Hogwarts announce to nation that seeing me drown in poverty has just become a national priority. Either choice is hardly a substitute for intellectual capital. Grown up were amphi. Your social status was based upon how well you could fight or kick a ball. No exactly the criteria for becoming the next Prime Minister or CEO of a Fortune 500 company, is it? I mean, the only thing I've got to any value is this tattered looking watch my granda left me. My mate Fraser is into the antique shows on the telly. The way the cunt goes on, you'd think he was a curator at the British Museum and known remand for robbing a couple of posh stately hames. My mobile starts ringing off the hook about half seven at night. As soon as I answer the phone, Fraser starts to yell down the line, Bobag, you're a fucking millionaire! My first thought was he must be back day in acid or something, so I hung up the phone on him. About half hour later, I hear banging on my door. It was any of the police knocks, Ken. The yins that about take the door off the bloody hinges. Fraser comes charging in, all out of breath and gasping for air in the mutters. Your granddad's watch? It's worth a million quid. I seen the exact same yin on the antiques roadshow the night. At first, I thought he was fucking with me. But yin I could see his pupils were still dilated. It started to hit me he wasn't taking the piss after all. We were both wetting ourselves at the thought of all that money. First thing the next morning, we made a few calls to get a jeweller to value the watch. On about the fifth call I made, we were put in touch with an expert at watches who had the jewellers on Princess Street. This was the end of the places posh cunts go to get their dicks up. I mean, it had mere bling than Mr T. As we stood outside the building, Fraser eloquently took this opportunity to remind me of his claim to a share of the money. Aye, you childhood pal, and remember it was me who told you about the fucking thing. And don't forget I paid you back that tenner. That's a hundred grand of any rich cunt's money. I couldn't believe my ears. I stood there with three quid in shrapnel jingling about in my pocket. And this cunt wants a hundred grand off me. This boy dressed in a tuxedo and bow tie who looked as if he was waiting for a bell to ring to go and wipe his master's ears greeted us in reception. I could see by the glare in the boy's eyes he wasn't used to coming across two rough and tumble boys like us in his line of work. He directed us into his office and started to appraise the thing. And after about a couple of minutes he told us something we should have kent all along. It was worth a pittance. The colour for our faces drained away. Along with our hopes of a way out of this fishbowl we call a life. Didn't get me wrong. If I'd had the energy, I would have taken Fraser to the roof of the building to throw him off and then hold him back up for an encore. The way that cunt had been going on, we were about to do a deal with Sotheby's. Instead, I find out I've got a watch that I need to get some unsuspecting celebrity to wear then shoot them on the spot just to get his value up past the 80 quid mark. Poverty does that to you. It isn't just a word for politicians to throw about to get our vote. It's an illness of the mind, body and soul. I found this half-empty bottle of Smyrna vodka my mate had left behind for last weekend. After pouring myself a glass, I raise it to make a toast to my new companion. This is for you, little yin. Cheers. Aye, but again, the wee man for sure. He'll learn. He'll see. I was yin's like him. A fighter. Now I'm just tired and I feel sick at hurt. That's the thing about dreams and aspirations. They're just a fairy tale story we're told by our parents. A fucking make-believe idea that gives us hope that things will get better. An idea that a nobody can become a somebody in day. That David did beat Goliath. The truth is, the more you try to reach for the stars, the closer you become to reaching for the bottle. It's like when we're bairns, we're told to be good and Santa Claus will bring us loads of presents. It's a beautiful idea, but there comes a point when we realise we've been HUD. All it takes is for some smart ass to come along and tell us Santa's no real. Then, your whole world is flipped upside down. That's what dreams and aspirations are in life. It's all yin big fucking Santa Claus. I've realised some it likes. And that is that guys like me and the spider can chase our dreams, but we'll never make it. In the end, fuck Santa Claus. Didn't give me that look, comrade. I can't help boys like us are destined to be the pun of the system's jokes. It's not us who make the rules, but it's sure as shit us who have to follow them. Am I right, or what? You didn't need to convince me it's no fair we have to hide in the dark like some disease-ridden rat.
I wasn't bullshitting you earlier. I was like you. Many moons ago the new, mind you, but I was yet fully ambition too. Aye. That watch of my granddad's. He gave me it when he thought I was going to be a somebody. Back in the day I was a promising wee football player. I even had a trial with the mighty Hybies. Aye. In another life I might have been a professional player and it could have been my name in neon lights above Easter Road. What happened, you ask? Aye, well, like a lot of the folk for here, I was a victim of circumstance. I became mere bothered about what my mates were up to at the weekend, and then came the drugs. Before I knew what was happening, my dreams of making it onto the pitch became a distant memory, and I was on the fast track to this point in my life. I wonder, though. Yance I guzzle down a few of these tablets, and you sit and watch as my lights turn out. Will I make it onto the pitch in the afterlife, maybe? Just maybe. I might. I mean, most of the boys I hung about with at school spent some time at Her Majesty's pleasure. Funnily enough, I bumped into an old mate for school the other week down at the bookies. There I was, wishing a thousand deaths on the jockey of my fallen horse, when I heard this voice that resembled a foghorn. Chrissy, long time no see, eh? As I turned round, I was faced with Matty Johnson who he had nicknamed Bananas on account of him being a lunatic. He had just served a two-year sentence for GBH when he attacked a guy wielding a mace. I mean, in this day and age, who owns a mace? Let alone actually uses you. Some said he had a fascination with Game of Thrones, but who knows. It turned out the whole incident was over a boy working at Pizza Hut putting too many slices of pepperoni on his pizza or some pish. We both chatted away to each other like old times, then he asked, What are you doing with yourself now? I told him, just trying to survive another week on the dole. Then Matty eagerly explained to me the benefits of prison. I'm telling you, Chrissy, he says, you need to spend a bit of time inside. Three square meals a day and no bills. Fucking quality, man. I stood there thinking to myself, surely it's no come to this. I've got to be incarcerated to stay out of the food bank. I mean... This is the place people come to make it. A place where you can be whoever you want to be. And here's me taking career advice for a mace-wielding psycho while I watch a horse decide whether I will have food in my belly or a roof for my head. With each waking moment, I try to convince myself something will turn up. I guess General Custard must have said the same thing at Little Bighorn. And we all ken what turned up there. Another load of irate Indians. Take a long, hard look around. Things are doing it all across the board. You've got Mr Burns in the White House. Guys who wouldn't normally steal as much as a penny chew are having to steal to feed their families. Oh, and if that wasn't bad enough, some pencil pusher in London has decided to take it on themselves to inspire the next Charles Dickens. The mere intently I watched the spider. The mere care he seems to be taking his attempts to swing onto the shelf. I'm not sure if it's the weed or the vodka or maybe a combination of both, but I'm starting to think that this wee guy is out to prove me wrong. I feel like Leith's answer to Dr. Doolittle at the minute. This ballsy wee bastard is game. There's no dispute in that. Though, again, he takes a sip for the fountain of failure. You see, it's in our DNA to fail. Whether it be me or the spider, we always end up doing what's expected of us. Which is to come up short. It's the price of being the underdog. Ugh, I get it now. The cobwebs have been removed if you pardon my bun. You think this shitbox of a flat I've got came easy to me? That accepting a life of poverty was the easy choice? Let me tell you, son. I grafted most of my days to end up with fuck all. That's what all these rich cunts can never understand. It takes a lot of blood, sweat and tears to get where I am. As soon as a higher power or big bang or whatever you believe in, I'm not here to judge, decided you were going to be a spider, then you were up shit creek with a paddle as my old gran would say. It's strange though how things come back at you, you ken. Memories. Long conversations with Matty talking about the odd days. And I was a 16 year old bairn again. It got me thinking about that time I spent in high school. You've got to understand, Yan Hang. Bairns from that area were more tolerated than encouraged by the teachers. This wasn't any of these Walt Disney films we were making here. You ken the sort of film I'm talking about, that Bairn is involved in a terrible accident and has to learn to walk again. By the end of the film, the teacher has her arm raised for winning gold in the 200 metres at the Olympics. Nah. This was real life. 
and like anything in this life, it was tough. The teachers weren't able to see beyond our tracksuits or how we would say Ken instead of no. Aye. In their eyes, the factory flare beckoned for us when we left school. Granted, at the time I didn't realise they were having a premonition because that's exactly where I ended up. Well, that was up until a few months ago, when my boss imported a machine designed in China that could operate quicker and cheaper than a pair of hands. Honestly, I hear all the time folk around here complaining that these immigrants are coming over here and stealing our jobs. Nobody mentions R2-D2 as they're in waiting in the wings to pull our plug. With just a few crumbs of encouragement from my teachers though, things could have been so much different. I might have owned the factory instead of serving as a drone in by pressing a button all day. Aye, I could see it now. Christopher Matthews, a captain of industry. You never can. Matty might have turned out to be Scotland's answer to George R. R. Martin. This time the spider is close, real close. I've got to admit, this wee guy has a lot of hair. The mayor have watched his struggles, the mayor have come to realise we are kindred spirits. We both try and fail time and time again. The strange thing is, this insignificant fleeting moment in my life has kept me from drawing my final curtain. Maybe I was just looking for something to hold on to before I depart this mortal realm. Something, anything that might show me that there is still hope left in this world instead of the miserable existence that waits for me out there, waiting patiently to greet me like an old friend. I appreciate your efforts to show me there's another way to die things and that hard graft can pay off someday. I mean that. No shit. The truth is, it's inevitable. We will choke when our big moment comes along. I would love to believe you, but that's life, as old blue eyes ain't said. It isn't like I'm stupid. I ken the difference between a dream and a memory. I can tell you the meaning of love, but... What am I going to tell St. Peter when I meet him at those pearly gates and he says, Tell me about what you learnt for your time on earth, my son. Well, St. Peter, I can a uh, good joint when I puff it. You'll need immortality to witness Scotland qualifying for a World Cup. Oh, and uh, I learnt to appreciate the meaning of poverty. Nah, there's got to be more to all this than that, or what's the point? The other night I was searching Netflix to find something to watch. I came across a film I hadn't seen in years. The Truman Show. That guy was a... The young that used to be funny. Jim Carrey. Aye. He played this boy who realises his whole life has been scripted. Didn't get me wrong. It might have been the weed talking, but... I couldn't help but think boys like me all live in our very own Truman Show. We grow up. Work in a job that serves to kill our spirit. And then we settle down and maybe have a few bairns. And when the time comes to draw our final breath... We've accumulated enough debt that our creditors will be holding a seance. All because society tells us we need a flash motor, designer clothes, a holiday abroad once a year and a fucking credit card. The point is, all we are doing is making sure all these rich toffs have made a tidy profit for our time spent here. And all the while we produce the next batch of workers to take our place on the chain gang. The greatest trick those in power ever pulled was getting the workers to believe we all have equal opportunities. For the moment we first open our eyes and until the time finally comes to close them. Their lives have been mapped out for us, by them from the cradle to the grave. In this country, cash is class. When you're born into a family with a bit of money and the right postcode, you're on the home straight, while the rest of us are just warming up for the race. I can feel those boxy painkillers daring me to swallow a few of them, and then it will be over and out. Name any of this pain. I might actually be at peace for once. Earlier, I went along to the cash machine on the high street. On my way there, I stopped to admire all the artwork splattered across the shop walls. For what I could make out, there's a few folk for here fond of park or and some cunt called Pongo. Apparently, you wouldn't ride his mum into battle. I punched in my pin and my balance of 13 quid and 80 pence sent my heart fluttering. My breathing became shallower and I thought I was having a heart attack right there and then. So I decided to Google my symptoms. It turns out my obituary was being written yesterday. I just thought to myself in that moment, this life is just too hard. And I was set to end it all until my eight-legged hero arrived. You can what? I've kept faith in a system my entire life that has promised so much to boys like me but gave us so little. That's why, 
If this spider can make it on the fourth attempt, then I'm going to give this whole life hang another go. Aye, I like a gamble as much as the next degenerate. Fuck it. This should be a sign for the beyond. Watching the wee guy. He seems to have sensed what's at stake here. This time he seems to be taking mere caution. It almost seems as if he's got a plan of action here. Aye. That's it, son. You're nearly there. Come on. You can do it. I fucking believe in you, my hairy little friend. <sighs> I can't believe my eyes. He's done it. He's on the shelf. Yes.